Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us in the Cirrus Insight webinar. Uh, first of all, Sue, uh, I'm going to say a couple of words about uh, Cloud Tech, and then I'll be handing it over to you. Excellent. Sounds great. Perfect. So first, I want to join everybody for thanking us. Uh, my name is Jordan Snapper, and I'm the marketing manager at Cloud Tech. We are a Salesforce Gold partner. So I'll tell you a little bit about us. Uh, we were founded in 2012 with the aim of providing a complete solution for all of our customers' Salesforce needs. Uh, we also have hundreds of successful products and over 150 customers who receive top-tier services on a regular basis. Uh, these services are uh, provided on three different levels, and they are the SI, which is a system integrator. And what that does is basically we, we uh, provide implementing systems from the design stage through implementation that once they go live, and of course we provide uh, ongoing support after. We also offer PDO, which is product development outsourcing services, and uh, we're also one of few selected PDOs outside of Europe and the Americas. We also lead many product companies throughout the Salesforce ecosystem and through the complex onboarding process of the App Exchange. So the third service that we offer is uh, the ISV, which is Independent Software Vendors. And we also have a number of applications which we developed specifically for the App Exchange as part of the uh, expertise on that platform. Uh, in addition to that, we have also had several collaborations with product companies that have upgraded Salesforce user experience and our Cirrus Insight is an excellent example of the activities provided through our partners. Uh, Cirrus Insight also enables the automation of everyday manual processes. Uh, Sue, who is the VP Channel Sales of Cirrus, will demonstrate the benefits of the product. Sue, over to you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Jordan. And yes, we're a partner of CloudTech, and we do a lot of uh, business together. And we'll talk a little bit about the logistics of that, too, and, and how you guys can gain access to a trial license of Cirrus Insight as well. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm showing the integration right now through Gmail, but we do also support Office 365 with a native add-in as well as Outlook. So for those of you on the line that are not Gmail, if you're using a, a, those other platforms, we do fully support those as well. And I'll be sure to point out anything that's different uh, with the Outlook or Office 365 integrations. But the whole concept of Cirrus Insight is to make Salesforce easier to use for your salespeople and employees that are using Salesforce. One of the challenges that we see, and it's not unique to Salesforce, quite honestly, it's unique to, it's really a, a common problem with CRM in general, is that it doesn't get used. It, it's, uh, you know, viewed as kind of like data entry or something secondary that people have to update and, and put information into, and it's not really even your workflow. So you're sitting there in your email and that's where you're corresponding with your your contacts and your clients and your prospects, but now you've got to go into a separate interface to actually log those activities as well as maybe keep that pipeline up to date and create opportunities and keep those opportunities up to date. You're going back and forth a lot and you're also potentially missing some information. So what we do is we bring Salesforce right into the inbox. So this is our app here, Cirrus Insight. And with uh, the Google integration, it is a Chrome extension. With um, Outlook, it's a plug-in if, if you're using the client version of Outlook. If it's Office 365, it's a native add-in. So it's all a client-side integration. But essentially, it's giving me Salesforce right inside my inbox. So when Jordan and I were kind of corresponding back and forth, obviously, about logistics of this webinar, you'll see when he emails me, his information here pops out in the side panel. So I can see if I were to look Jordan up in, in Salesforce, this is what I would see. We also give you some other, you know, relevant information too. So we're going to show you email tracking history. So email tracking is part of our app. So when I'm sending email to people, I'll know if they've opened the email up. I'll also know if they've clicked on any links. We report that obviously back to Salesforce, but I can also see it in the snapshots. So you have an idea right away how engaged someone is with your email correspondence. And I can obviously drill down into more detail if I need to. So if I want to see other emails I may have sent Jordan or another person, I can go in and take a look and look at all of the tracking history that's been, that's been going on. So you have lots of information when it comes to tracking. You're also able to see, most important for, for salespeople probably, um, what's the current opportunity pipeline. So it's going to show me how many opportunities I have open for the contact that I'm in, as well as 
the breakdown of how many are in progress, how many are closed one, and how many are closed lost. And again, I can go into those opportunities. I'm also able to create new opportunities. It's also using all of the workflow and validation and permissions that are set up in Salesforce. So you'll notice for us, we've got three different opportunity types. So I would select. So it could be just like me going into Salesforce and creating that opportunity. I'm also able to see any activities, so past activities and upcoming activities. Now we write a lot of data to this too, um, because we can turn on email and calendar sync. So in the background, I can have my calendar in Gmail or, or Outlook or Office 365 syncing with Salesforce. So I can continue to manage my calendar the way that I always have, but those events will sync into Salesforce so that I don't need to, again, take a separate action to log that activity. It's automatically there and it's fully synchronized two ways. So if something is created in Salesforce, it would be on my calendar, Gmail or Outlook. And any updates, you know, that I might make, maybe I, you know, change a meeting time or it's a recurring event, all of that is fully supported and it's now inside of Salesforce so that I can see past events or upcoming events when I'm looking at a record and it's real time. I'm also able to see if you're using email sync all of the emails that I have had back and forth with that particular contact or lead. And that can be something that's every email that you're sending or receiving, or you could choose on the fly to add an email to Salesforce. So if I want to add this email that Jordan sent me, if I'm not using the sync, I can do that right from here. So there's lots of options to get emails into Salesforce. When I click add to Salesforce, I can also choose how I'm doing that. So it could be a very quick add. So if I just want to throw that into Jordan's activity history, I would click that. But maybe I want to make this custom so I could have this relate to, you know, any record. And again, you'd see custom objects here. I'm also able, if there was attachments, add those attachments in. Um, this whole form is, is what's, you know, logging to Salesforce and it's completely customizable as well. So you have a lot of ways to get those activities logged into Salesforce either automatically or very quickly with a couple of clicks of a mouse, you know, right into Salesforce, right in the inbox. And if I have any cases for this particular contact, they would be visible here as well. And again, <clears throat> I can go in and create a new case right from here too. You're also able to see any related list information on any of the records that you're viewing. So obviously mine would look different from, you know, those of you on the line that, that use Salesforce because every org is different, but you'd see a lot of custom objects here. I can also navigate to different records. So this is Jordan's contact record, but if I wanted to look up uh, Cloud Tech, the account, I could do that too. And again, see the related list information there. I could go in and edit, you know, the detailed information. I'm able to do really anything I would normally have to be going into Salesforce to do. I can do right inside of Gmail, Outlook, or, or Office 365. So again, it does make the updating and the, the data entry part of it just, you know, super easy because it's right there contextually. And it, you're more inclined to keep opportunities and everything up to date because it just pops out right inside of the side panel. I'm also able to manage other, you know, lists that I might be looking at in Salesforce. So, for example, tasks. You know, tasks is another one that can pile up. You know, people sometimes get behind on these. I can now actually go in <clears throat> and manage all of my tasks. And I can see those same filters that I do inside of Salesforce. If I was just curious about what's today or maybe what's on the docket, for tomorrow or the next seven days, and then fully go in and manage that task just like I would in Salesforce. Or other list views that I might be managing. I think a good example of this for salespeople in particular would be opportunities, right? I want to keep my pipeline up to date, so maybe I want to pull in all of my opportunities. I'm going to just run through and, and do a healthy uh, pipeline update. Or if I'm managing the team, I might want to see what's closing this month for everyone. So I can pull that in, the end of the quarter, so that's probably pretty, pretty relevant for everyone right now. Let's see what opportunities are closing. I can go in and, and just get a, an update on that. But again, I'm doing this all, you know, right inside of, of Gmail, right inside of the side panel. I can also fully search Salesforce, too, so I don't need to wait, you know, for someone to correspond with me to, to get their information. And you can search. The search is very intuitive. You could do a power search, which would just be like entering that into the search bar in Salesforce. So if this was a, an account I was looking for, or any, again, custom objects. Let's say I just wanted to look up the Cloud Tech account. Oop, if I spelled it correctly, um, I would just search right here. And this will pull all of the matches that it finds right into the side panel, and I can navigate right to the record. So there's a full search capability built into it as well. 
When I'm sending an email, I have a lot of options too. Again, you know, I might be doing the sync in the background, so that's automatically happening, but if not, I could again choose to add this email to Salesforce when I'm sending it. Email tracking is something that you can turn on by default, so track every single email, choose if you want to track links, choose if you want to track replies, but once you've got that set, it'll happen automatically, or again, you could choose on the fly to track your emails if you want to do that instead. We also have this cool book meeting function built into our app too, and this is one that I, you know, use all day long, trying to get meetings booked on the calendar, especially since I do handle our partner ecosystem, which people are all over the place. You know, you, you guys are all over there in Israel, I'm here in the U.S., I've got partners in Australia, which are the reverse, and doing a lot of meetings potentially at night. So trying to get those nailed down can be tough sometimes, with the back and forth. So this makes it super easy. So I click on book meeting. This just pulls my Gmail calendar, and again, we support this with Outlook as well, right into the app. So I can see what openings I have on my calendar. I could display, so I'm Eastern Standard, if I wanted to display my calendar in a different time zone, I could. But even if I don't, the recipient does have the option of viewing it in their own time zone. So if I just go ahead and select some times that are open for me, I could do that. And this is all customizable too. So I keep my GoToMeeting in there as a default. Most of my meetings are online, but if this was somewhere in, in person, I could change that. Or you know, if you guys use WebEx, whatever, that's all customizable. I can also add other people. So maybe I want to set this up, but I also want one of our uh, customer support uh, people on the line. I can put their email in. I can even, if people share their calendar with me, I can also display their availability instead. So if I was setting this meeting up for someone else, or maybe I'm a, a BDR or an SDR and I'm going to put this on one of our account executives' calendars, I can do that. But for purposes of this, I'll, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So this is me wanting to set up a meeting with someone. This is what the recipient receives. So it's basically saying, I want, want to set up a meeting. Here's the times that work. If they're not Eastern Standard, they can click here and view in their own time zone. But once they click that meeting time, then it automatically books it on my calendar, sends them an invite, and because my calendar is also synced with Salesforce, now that upcoming meeting's in Salesforce. So a lot of things just happened by me sending an email. And again, that, that real-time logging of that upcoming event. So if someone is wanting to know what's going on with this particular account, they would see, oh, Sue has a meeting with them you know, next week. Instead of you know, me logging that maybe post-meeting, you even get that visibility to what's kind of coming up. You're also able to, instead of just saying, hey, here's some times that work for me, we also give you a unique meeting link. And I don't need to access this just from uh, book meeting. So here's the link to my personal scheduling page, although we do give you just a quick and easy way to insert it using book meeting. But I could put this link in my signature or anywhere. Or that could just be something that you know people have access to all the time if they need to meet with me. But I can go ahead and insert this into email. And this gives them easy access to it. Now, again, this doesn't let people see, I'll click on it to show you what it looks like, see my events. They just see when I'm available. And then you set up some preferences for this, like your working hours. So obviously, you don't want people booking meetings in the middle of the night for you. So you set that up. You can also put in a default. Again, I have my go-to meeting in here as a default. You could determine, they can choose you know, what time frame they want. And you could set up parameters for that too. But once I select a meeting time, same thing, it's just going to go ahead and book it, so I click schedule time. That meeting's down on my calendar, they fill out a few little things here, and then they get an invite. So it goes, it goes and books it, and then that's on my calendar, it's synced to Salesforce, and it's there. So there's lots of options for not only tracking the meetings, but making it easier for you to get those meetings on the calendar. And I'm going to cover this icon in a second. This is our, our uh, sales campaign tool, but I'm going to cover that a little later, but that's an easy way to, to launch somebody into a sales campaign right from a Compose option as well. This option here lets me queue an email up to send it later. So if I were typing this email up, but maybe it's Sunday night and I really don't want this hitting that person's inbox at Sunday, I want it to get there first thing in the morning, I would just basically decide when I want it to go. So you just determine the time, the date, and away we go. You can also schedule a follow-up reminder about this email too. So if I want to make sure I follow up with this person in a week or a specified time, I can write some notes as to why I'm following up. This will generate a Salesforce task, but I can also, if I want, have it come into my inbox. I can
can also say, you know, come into my inbox, but only if there's no response. So there's options there too. And we just send you a reminder that says, you know, hey, you asked us to remind you to follow up on this email. So as we, you know, we all send a lot of emails, probably not going to remember off the top of our head to follow up. I certainly could create a task in Salesforce to do it, but this makes it super easy instead of me going multiple places. You're also able to access your Salesforce email templates through our app too. And this is another you know, great feature that I use all day long. And I think in general, Salesforce email templates kind of get underutilized because again, they're more of an advanced feature, let's say, to get to in Salesforce. So this makes it easy. And again, you know, if you're concerned about your messaging being consistent, you know, from a from a sales or, or marketing perspective, this is a good way of doing it. And again, it's supporting all of the permissions. So if I don't have access to templates in Salesforce, I'm not going to have access to those templates here. So I'm only going to have the folders that are, are shared with me. As well as if I don't have access to edit templates, I can't edit them here. But since I do, this just shows me all of mine. So I can preview what that what that email looks like. And then I can also edit it. It also shows me, because we're using email tracking, what the open and reply rates are too. So you could get a, a good idea on what, what emails are working better than others. And again, that's all reportable back to Salesforce. You guys can see that through a dashboard. You can see which you know email open rates by template. So if I'm going to just select an existing template here, we'll just click this. This just validates the merge field who I'm sending this to. And then boom, it's right in there. And again, because it's in my email, I could actually, you know, add a little bit more customization to it, let's say, if I wanted to. So it allows you to kind of automate but still keep stuff personalized. You're also able to access the templates from our mobile app too. So we do have a mobile app. It's uh, supported on iOS or Android, and it's complementary to what you're doing here in the inbox. So um, and it's really a great mobile app, to be honest. I don't even use Salesforce One. I just use Serious Insight Mobile because it does have that full Salesforce search on board as well. And when you're in Serious Insight Mobile, it's an email client. So you're checking your email through Serious Insight Mobile, but the benefit is you get all of this, right? You get your contextual Salesforce info. I can update a record. I can um, you know, create an opportunity if someone's not in Salesforce, I can add them, I can add their emails if I'm not doing the sync. So I'm not losing any of that functionality when I'm not in the office because that's arguably more challenging to go from your email app on your phone into Salesforce One. Maybe now you want to book a meeting, we give you the book meeting function with the mobile app. Or if I want to send an email and I know I've got a nice, you know, template in there, instead of typing an email on my phone and having like the errors that potentially could happen there, I can use my email templates as well. So the mobile app is really a, a powerful app that gives you a lot of useful features too. We'll close this out and go into a couple other things here. Um, this feature, flight plans and, and campaigns for now are unique to Gmail. Um, we are going to be doing an, a release on, on Office 365 later this year, but for those of you on the line that are they're not on Gmail, just uh, we are going to have something for you, but it will be a little bit later this year. So the example I just showed you before would be me sending an email to, to one person. If I want to send an email to a bunch of individuals, I have a, a couple different options for that. If it's just a one-off email campaign, then campaign is a good fit for that. So for example, if I'm just doing maybe an announcement to our partner ecosystem about a new feature, a new process, I would use a campaign. So I would give that campaign a name. So maybe I'm going to call this July Update. And then I build the recipients or pull the recipients from Salesforce. It's either a list view of leads or contacts or a report of leads or contacts. So for me, I've got a report that I use quite frequently called Partner Main Contact, which is just the main contact at all of my partner accounts. So Jordan is is a recipient of these emails that I send out from time to time. You are also able to choose if you want to exclude recipients that may have previously opted out of receiving emails from you. And that's something you can lock down with your org. So if you want people to not be able to do that, if, you, if you're concerned with you know, being respectful of, of people that don't want correspondence, you can lock that down. And then you do have a maximum of 500 at a time. So I can't send more than 500. And the reason for that is you're drafting these in Gmail, so you don't want to run the risk of having your you know, Gmail account shut down for spam. So once I select my recipients 100 at a time with a maximum of 500, this just pulls me to the next step, which is what kind of content do I want to send. So again, I could use an existing Salesforce email template, or maybe because this is a July update, I'm not going to ever send 
the same update ever again, I don't want to create a template. So I would just, you know, give it an email subject, create the content. I can pull all the merge fields in here from Salesforce. So maybe I'm going to do contact and then I'm going to do first name, any merge field that you want, you can pull in. So you can make a really nice personalized template and then I put my content in and now I could choose to save this to Salesforce or not. If it's a one-off thing, maybe I'm not going to do that. I can choose to use my corporate signature as well. But once I do that, it's just going to preview what this email is going to look like and then it's going to build my campaign. So I don't need to wait here. As soon as it's done, it's going to send me an email that the campaign's ready to go and then I can choose to send it right now or maybe I want this to go out next week. It's not July yet. I'm also able to, you know, add all those emails to Salesforce, track them. Um, if I wanted to, I could schedule a follow-up reminder if, if that's appropriate for, for the workflow here. But it's really, really easy for me to create this campaign. And again, I'm doing this all inside of Gmail. I don't need to go into Salesforce at all. We also have something new that we just released. We're just out of beta and we're super excited about it. It's called Flight Plans. So Flight Plans really takes um, this campaign feature to the next level, although you could still just send a very straightforward email campaign. So a flight plan is taking your sales process and building it into what we call a flight plan. And it consists of three different things. It's emails, phone calls, and to-dos. So whatever process you have, you know, most people have some sort of a process as a salesperson for you know, following up with someone maybe they met in an event, or you get a, a list that you've maybe put together from LinkedIn and now you want to do some outreach. Whatever that process is, you could build that into a flight plan. And this manage button is probably something not everyone at your company would have, so you'd want some consistency. So somebody that's managing the team, let's say, would create a, a bunch of different flight plans and then people can put individuals into those flights. But for example, we can kind of build a quick case here. I was actually just at an event um, out in Chicago. It was a, a Target X event, which is a, a Salesforce product that is targeted towards higher ed. They use it for recruiting. Um, so I did meet quite a few people here, so maybe I'm going to call this Target X follow-up. So I'm going to load in all those people that I met at Target X. And I can give this a description, so maybe I'm going to say follow up from event. And now I can go ahead and create what process I want to use. So maybe my first step is an email, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a call or a to-do. But I'm going to, for purposes of this, I'm going to make this first step an email. So I'm going to call this great meeting you at the event. And then I'm going to load in what content I want to send to them. You also have options for what is going to happen here. When I put this person into flight, are they going to get that email automatically? Or am I going to have it be a review and send, which means it's going to pop up in my action items that this email is ready to go, but I have to choose to actually send it. This way, again, I could layer in a bit more personalization. Maybe I had a really great conversation with that person out in Chicago, and I just want to kind of reference that in the email. So that it, the idea about, about flight plans is that it's not supposed to look like a marketing and email campaign. It's supposed to be personalized, allow you to automate, but allow you to layer in you know, your own personal flair and talent, you know, as a salesperson. So the email content that I can put in here, again, I can repurpose Salesforce templates that I've already created. So if I've got some in there that I want to use, I can certainly do that. Or again, I might want to create a new template. But for purposes of we've got a limited time window here, I'm just going to throw something in. So I'm going to click this one and, and put this in, preview the content. Now that's step one ready to go. I'm going to say, no, I don't want this to go automatically. I do want this to be a review and send. So it's going to pop up in my action items as the first step. And then once I send it, it's going to queue them up for the second step, which I'm going to create here. So now I determine what step number two is. And that can be you know, within the same day. So you determine you know, how many hours or minutes later. Or that could be a, a day later. So maybe after a day, I'm going to call this particular person and follow up on my email. Again, I can load in call script content. So this would pop up when I had that call. What would I say? So if you really want to kind of coach somebody through what they might say if they get a vo someone's voicemail or get them on the line, maybe these are bullet points, whatever. But again, just kind of ensuring that you know, that's a successful call and I've got everything there I need to, to transact it. So I'm just going to pop anything in here. And this is just kind of some general guidelines. So this is my step number two now. And it's after a day, I'm going to follow up on that, that email that I sent. Then I can layer in another step. So maybe after another couple of days, 
I'm going to want to start researching this person online. And then I put that descriptive information about this to do into this step. So I would say, you know, connect on LinkedIn, maybe Twitter, whatever those online sites are, um, Instagram, you know, we all have those sites, right? So now I can put this all in, maybe follow their blog, because I'm going to want to do this anyway, but this is just allowing me to put it into kind of a checklist and make sure that I do it. So I'm putting this all in. I can, if it's, you know, relevant, pull merge fields from Salesforce for the task as well. I can also insert images or links. Maybe I put the links to Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram in there to make it even easier when this pops up. So this could go on. I mean, I, a flight plan can be as long or as short as necessary. Um, but again, for purposes of our time parameter here, we're going to make this just a three-step flight plan. And then after those steps are run and there's been, you know, no response from the person that you put into flight, so let's say after, I'm going to say after 30 days, we're going to end it and choose an outcome. So outcomes are really important to the whole flight plan process too. So I'm not going to save this flight plan because we were just building this for, for demonstration purposes. So we'll hit cancel. Uh, you would build in ahead of time when you build flight plans what your potential outcomes are. So outcomes are anything that I might encounter when someone's going through the steps of a flight. So I'm making phone calls and sending emails. I'm performing these tasks. So, so let's say somebody responds to my email and they say, yeah, it was great meeting you at TargetX. Let's, you know, let's get some time on the calendar to, to schedule a meeting. Well, that's a positive outcome. So maybe I make an outcome called meeting scheduled. So we actually have that. So it means they book some time on the calendar with me for a meeting. I'm certainly not going to continue them in the flight plan because I've gotten a, a, to the outcome that I wanted, and it's positive. So you rate your outcomes as either positive or negative. And then you also associate a goal value to your outcomes. And this is a, a, you know, hugely valuable over time, especially when you're trying to justify marketing expenditures, you know, like this Target X event. We sponsored it, so it cost us money to, to sponsor it. You know, certainly cost me money to fly there in my hotel. So we want to make sure we get our return on investment from that event. So you take a look at, you know, what getting someone to sit down with you and, and listen to what your product is or your services are, what is that worth to you? So for us, if someone schedules a meeting with us, it's worth about $500. So I'm willing to spend up to $500 to get to that point. So let's say an event, you know, did cost you $5,000. But you got 10 meetings scheduled, well, that's great because, you know, you definitely got your return on investment. Or the, the converse, right? Maybe you didn't get any meetings set up. Maybe you only got one. So maybe you need to investigate, you know, was that, was that a good event? So that's where the, you know, negative outcomes come into play. So maybe I'm reaching out in that particular flight plan and I get someone on the phone and they say, you know what, that's great, but I'm just, you know, I'm not interested. Or in our case, we only integrate with Salesforce, so maybe they tell me, I don't use Salesforce. So that would obviously be negative because I don't have something I can actually sell to them at this point. Um, it wouldn't have any value to us really at that point, so that would have a zero goal value. Or a good example of a negative outcome could also be used as a competitive product. So obviously, you know, we all have competition out there, right? <laughs> so if someone tells me I'm happy with a competitor, you know, I might, I'm going to rate that as negative. But I may, you'll notice with these like individual outcomes, just go in and create a new one, you are able to chain them. So for example, if someone said, I'm going to call this competitive use, uses a different tool. I'm going to rate this as negative. I may give it a very small goal value because if they're using a competitive tool, at least I know that they believe in the concept of email, you know, is the way to access Salesforce, and that's, you know, they, that sort of a tool is a valuable piece to their business process. But I might say I want to automatically start another flight plan when this outcome is selected. So, and that could be something that's different, right? Maybe that's just email. Maybe it's got some really descriptive content on why we're better than said competitor, and they get that content, you know, once a month, once a quarter, whatever, whatever is appropriate there. But that would happen automatically. So I get someone on the phone. They tell me they're using a competitive tool. I certainly want to choose an outcome because I don't want to continue to call and, and, and harass them potentially, but I do want to make sure that they stay on our radar. So now I'm going to end that particular flight, and they're going to get launched into another one. So there's lots of ways to kind of automate when people are in flight as well. But I'm going to just cancel that so I don't create this. 
Now, once you've got your flight plans created, there's lots of easy ways to put people into a flight. So I can do that um, with a, a bunch of people. So let's say I want to do it much like I did the campaign. So I, again, maybe I loaded those leads into Salesforce um, from the people I met at this event. So now I'm going to want to load them into a flight plan. So for purposes of this, I don't want to, I actually don't have a not done that yet because I just got back. <laughs> so we'll just use that partner list again as an example. So let's say I'm starting a flight plan to all of our partners. Now flight plans does have a limitation of 500 at a time. And again, because you know you could be potentially running multiple flights at any given time, um, emails are obviously a part of it. So we again want to make sure that we're not running the risk of getting your your Gmail account shut down as spam. Also, it's not designed to be a mass email tool. It's also going to load up, and we'll show you in a second, the action items. You're going to have a, a bunch of action items the minute you put people into flight. So you don't want to load that up too much where it's not you know, possible for you to keep up with those steps. Because obviously, you've got to keep up with the steps in the flight to make sure that you know, you're getting, it, it's not going to be successful if you're not you know, performing the tasks on time. So I would just select which flight I want to load them into, and this allows me to preview. So I can see, okay, yep, this is a good one, this is the one I want to put them into. It'll again determine what the steps are, show me who I'm putting into the flight, and then I can start it immediately, or I can choose to start it you know, at a later date. So maybe I want to queue this up to go out next week, give people a chance to get back into the office and adjust it before I start you know, reaching out to them. So that's kind of you know, what you want. And then I would just go ahead and start the flights. If I want to put an individual into a flight plan. So let's say Jordan and I corresponded and I wanted to start him in a flight. I can do that right from here. So again, I just choose the plan, preview the steps, and then again, it determines when I want it to go, and then I start Jordan in that flight. If the first step is an email, when I'm composing an email, you'll see this little flight option. And it's only going to pull in uh, the it's only going to pull in the flights that have email as a first step. So it's not going to let me, you know, I can't start a flight if it's not an email initiated flight plan. So when I click here for Jordan, it's going to pop up the ones that start kick off with an email. And then it's going to basically just show me what that step is. And then I'm going to be able to send that email and that's going to launch him into the flight plan. So it's really, really easy to put people into flight. Once they're in flight, then you're going to have this action items tab. And I'm not a good example of this right now because I was playing around with it, so I have some older plans in here that I need to get rid of. But essentially, you would just have what your next steps are. So if there's an email, this would show you review and send. So the email's ready to go. So this was not an automated email. An automated email would just go. So now I could go ahead and send it. I could type in some extra notes here, let's say, to make it a little bit more personalized. But once I send it, this person's going to now progress to the next step. Unless you know they respond back, or I, you know, if it's a phone call and I get them on the line, I could be prompted to choose an outcome. If it is a phone call, this pops up, and I have the option to make the call manually, either either using like a desk phone or maybe I've got a soft phone. Or we do integrate with Cirrus Insight Mobile. So if I click this, it's going to do a dial back to Cirrus Insight Mobile, and then I can click to perform the call, and now the call is transacted. Immediately, this loads and it's starting the timer. So I can write some notes in here. Um, again, this is all customizable. So if you want more information logging back to Salesforce, you can determine what that is through here. I'm also able to, when I'm done with the call, choose a result. So I either got connected and we had a conversation. I left a voicemail, or maybe this is just not a good number. It's no answer. So I'm going to want to you know, track that as well. But let's say I got connected, and I'm going to log this call. It's going to pop up and ask me, do I want to choose an outcome and end the flight? Because I had a conversation, right? I got connected. So there may have been an outcome, either a positive or negative. Or maybe it's, you know, we're not there yet. We want to continue them along. But let's say, again, they said, let's get a meeting scheduled. I'm going to choose a positive outcome. I could write some notes if I want. And now I can save it. That person's no longer in that flight. That outcome is tracked so that you can see that in the metrics. And you know now I'm I, I'm gonna get that meeting on the calendar and maybe I've got another flight plan for post meeting but that particular person is no longer in that flight. If it's a to do, same thing. It'll pop up in my action items and just give me that description of what I need to do. So here's an act now. It's, there's the instructions. I can write some notes. You know, got partner set up. 
and now this logs to Salesforce. So we don't, when you create these to-dos in a flight plan, they are not um, creating tasks in Salesforce. And we did that purposefully so that you don't have a bunch of tasks loading up that you have to engage with as well. But once you perform the to-do in, or inside of our flight plan, it does log that to Salesforce as activity history. So it is definitely capturing it, but it's making it you know, in the flight plan uniquely so that you don't also have the duplication of, of tasks. And it's also not creating duplication inside of Salesforce as well. And again, once I complete that particular action, I could, again, choose an outcome or skip and, and continue to progress them through that particular flight plan. If somebody responds to an email that's in your flight, then it automatically pauses the flight plan as well so that you don't um, have another email going out potentially in the sequence or a phone call until you tell us, do you want that to progress or choose an outcome? And the reason for that is, you know, again, somebody may respond to you and it may not, maybe it's just like, great, and it's not really <laughs> resulting in an outcome. But maybe it is, hey, yeah, let's get a meeting booked. Or maybe it's, hey, please stop contacting me. So we don't want to progress anybody through the steps until you know, we get an indication of what that is. And that's all in the body of the email. So it's very, very easy, again, to, to go ahead and choose what that action is. And that's kind of one of the strengths of flight plans is it's consistent throughout Gmail and throughout the app. So there's lots of different areas I can engage with it. For example, if somebody's in a flight, I believe I have this guy Tian in a flight because he's one of our partners, I can see what stage he is in the flight. So it's showing me that he's in flight plan beta partners. I could pause the flight plan form. So if he tells me, hey, I'm going to be on vacation for the next month, well, I certainly don't want to be calling him and sending him emails and performing tasks around him. So I would pause it and then start it again when he gets back. Or let's say Tian says to me, ah, you know what, I'm not interested. I can now stop and choose an outcome. Or again, positive, hey, I'm really interested. Let's get a demo set up. I can stop and choose that outcome right from here as well. So there's lots of areas. We also have all of the metrics built in to flight plans too. So I could see, I could look at my activity or if I want to look at the whole team, what's the activity for flights. I can see the different flights that are currently in, in, in flight as well as what is the breakdown of actions, emails, calls, and to-dos and what is the breakdown of positive versus negative outcomes. Or I could even drill down into unique flight. So I have, you know, if I want to see what's going on for that particular flight, I could drill down and look. So I've got this uh, flight plans beta. I could take a look at what's going on there. So what is my positive versus negative outcomes, as well as what is the breakdown of activities that have been going on. And then right from here, I can pause the individuals that are in this particular flight. And I can also stop, you know, the flight for them and, and choose an outcome. So the metrics are really important as well. Our new analytics package includes these metrics inside of Salesforce also, so you'll have access to them via dashboards. You can also trigger flight plans to go out or flights to start automatically inside of Salesforce. So when something gets updated, a status gets updated, a flight can automatically start. So when you're creating your flight plans, you'll see that there's, um, let's go in, I'm actually in the outcome. When you go into the flight plans, you'll see there's a number underneath, so it's a flight ID. So that's what you would put into Salesforce through uh, Apex and Process Builder that, hey, when this status updates happens, start this particular flight, and then you assign it to the user. So there can be some automation in Salesforce setup too. And this is all stuff that can be set up for you, you know, via Cloud Tech as well as one of our a, one of our certified partners as well. So this is all, you know, stuff that you can sit down and have a, a meeting with them and talk with them about what your current sales process is or if you need to build out a sales process and, and start building some flights and start putting people into flights and then you can start tracking all of, all of the metrics. So with that, I'm going to kind of take it back. Um, a couple of things I wanted to, to point out also, this page here is a really good page. This is our resources site. So it's just seriousinsight.com forward slash resources. This has a lot of information, case studies. So if you're interested in looking at you know, businesses like yourself that have used Serious Insight and how, it is, you know, how it's impacted their business, you can go in and take a look at those different case studies. We also have product sheets on all of our products, tutorials, as well as you know, presentations on flight plans, Serious Insight, all of that 
all of that's there. So it's a very useful site if you're kind of interested in getting a little bit more information. Also, as a partner of ours, CloudTech can give you a free trial. So if you want to test any of this out, we can set you up with a free trial to run for 14 days. And it's all set up in client side so that you're able to, to set that up um, without having to do anything inside of Salesforce to get that done. And if you decide you want to move forward with purchasing Cirrus Insight, again, as a client of CloudTech, we offer you guys a 20% discount off your first year of licensing so you can get yourself a better rate um, as being a, a client of, of CloudTech. And certainly, uh, I, what I like to do is if people are interested, we really like to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. Everybody uses Salesforce differently. Everybody has different workflow. Um, so we really like to sit down and kind of hear how are you using Salesforce? Um, what are your challenges? Maybe you're not on Salesforce yet. What are your ideas around what that might look like? And then we can really tailor our discussion towards your particular work case. Um, and same thing with flight plans. Obviously, flight plans is something that we don't actually offer trials off our website for because, again, it's a bit more of building in processes. It is going to be sending emails. So we really need to sit down and have a, a, a discussion around, you know, what kind of processes do you have in place now? How, how might that look in when you're building a flight plan, what kind of potential outcomes are you already running into or what you what do you foresee? So there's definitely a more of a, a consultative uh, discussion around flight plans. But, you know, you can work with Cloud Tech. They can loop myself in or we have a full team of account executives that we can set up meetings with. So if you're interested in learning a little more, I would say that's a, a good next step. Perfect. Um, well, on this, on this note, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for the, uh, for the entire presentation. I would also like to thank everybody who was able to actually make it today, and to those who will be sending you out a, uh, a, full, a full video shortly. And uh, Sue, if there's anything else you'd like to add, I guess uh, we, can, uh, we can end on this note. No, that's great. And I thank you very much, Jordan, for setting this up. And everybody on the line, thanks so much for your time. And uh, yeah, if, if you're interested, we would really love to chat with you a bit further. Thanks so much. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.